Thank you for watching Back Porch Wisdom with Pastor Rob Wynn. We pray that this weekly broadcast will be a blessing to you. And now here is Pastor Rob Wynn with today's message. Hi, this is Pastor Rob Wynn. I want to welcome you to Back Porch Wisdom, and I thank everybody that's tuning in and watching Back Porch Wisdom. We're talking about the, the significance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we find that in Romans, the, fourth, the first chapter, the fourth verse, he said, He was declared to be the Son of God with power by the Spirit of holiness through the resurrection of the dead. And so the first point that we spoke about is the vindication of all the claims that Jesus made of himself. The, the things that showed him to be right and de uh, declared of no suspicion by the resurrection of the dead. He declared that he was, he was the Son of God. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. He said in, uh, he said in John 10, he said, I, take, I can, can lay down, no man takes my life, I can lay my life down, and I can pick it back up again. He was, he was declaring that he was going to be raised from the dead. Then you find uh, that uh, what he, he could do, he said, if you destroy this temple, he knew they were going to do it. He said, if you destroy this temple, in three days I'll raise it up again. And man, they fussed about it, but it came true. He was raised from the dead. And so the second point is the resurrection signifies or shows or validates or it confirms and proves the accuracy of Jesus' complete success. We have witnesses of his complete success. You find that Mary Magdalene, after he was raised from the dead, that she saw him in his uh, resurrected body, with his wounds and he said don't touch me because I have not ascended to my father he had to take his blood into heaven and then uh, then you find that uh, uh, Thomas saw him after he had gotten his resurrected body he's with all all the disciples are hiding and Jesus comes through the door in his resurrected body uh, without it being opened in his flesh and bone body. And Thomas said, I won't believe until I put my hands in his side and in his, in his nail prints. And, and he did. And he said, my God and my Lord. And, uh, and Jesus said, blessed are those that, that believe and do not see. And then you find that there's a hostile witness of all things. So it can be proven legally. This is one, one way they prove it that is just infallible. Is, is that the centurion that was there witnessing his crucifixion. After it, it had been, the sky had darkened, there had been an earthquake. Then the temple uh, uh, curtain is rent from top to bottom. Then they're, the, they're dead that come out of the grave. And then he looks at Jesus after he's taken his last breath and he says, Truly this man was the Son of God. And then there's, there's many witnesses. You find in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, after he, he, it says this, verse 3, For I deliver to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And then He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve apostles, and after that He was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained unto the present, and some have fallen to sleep. And after that he was seen by James' his brother and by all the rest of the other apostles. And then at last he was seen by me, by one born out of due time. And he was seen by me, one out of, uh, born out of due time. And so you've got all these witnesses 
And then there's an explanation of the, uh, what ha took place during the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you find it in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 through 15, where it says, Buried with Him in baptism, in which also were raised with Him through the faith of the working of God, who raised Him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, He has made alive together with Him, having forgiven all your trespasses, having wiped out all the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to His cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. In other words, He redeemed mankind. He made mankind alive forevermore in Him. He destroyed the nature of sin, thus the power of sin. He destroyed the devil's power over us and making us more than conquerors making it impossible to separate us from Himself. The doctrine of Christ's death and resurrection is the foundation of Christianity. Moreover, this foundation and the whole fabric falls. All our hopes for eternal, eternity sink at once, and it is by holding this truth firmly that Christians made the stand in a day of trial and kept faith to God, according to Matthew Henry. Paul affirms that Christ's death disarmed these forces of evil. He has stripped the powers and authorities, just as a conquering opponent strips his weapons and armor and puts to public shame. Paul goes on to say that God in Christ made a public spectacle of them. That is to say, He exposed them to public disgrace by exhibiting them to the universe as, he, as His captives. This, this, the added words, triumphing over them in the, by the cross, expands the idea. The picture quite familiar in the Roman world is that of a triumphant uh, general leading a parade of victory. The conqueror, riding at the front of his chariot, leads his troops through the streets of the city. Behind them trails a wretched company of vanished kings, officers, and soldiers, the spoils of battle. Christ in this picture is the conquering general. The powers and authorities are the vanquished enemies displayed as the spoils of battle before the entire universe, talking about the devil and his cohorts. To the casual observer, the cross appears to only be an instrument of death, the symbol of Christ's defeat. Paul sees it as Christ's chariot of victory. And so he raised from the dead. And while he is raised from the dead spiritually in the devil's own territory in hell itself. He stripped the devil of all his power and all his authority to reign and, and deceive mankind. And he made a show of him openly, triumphing over him. He had a parade. So today, if you've never trusted my Jesus, today is the day to trust him. He is the risen king. And if you'll confess Him before men, He will confess you before His Father in heaven and make you His child. Make you you're, you're, you're the Father's child. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is Lord and that You raised Him from the dead so that I could be saved, so that I could be Your child. I believe that in my heart and I've said it with my mouth like You said it was necessary to do. In the, in the audience of witnesses. And I am saved. I am righteous in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, check out my website, Cornerstone Church, the number four, the letter U dot com. Go on Back Porch Wisdom and, uh, 
and uh, uh, subscribe to it. And then uh, Pastor Bobby Bonner's recording me. He's got a he's got a website that he puts videos on. It's called RevolutionBibleChurch.org. And God bless you and have a good day. If you're ever in the Linden, Alabama area, we invite you to worship with us at Cornerstone Church. For more information and other resources, visit our website at cornerstonechurchforyou.com.